everyone, how's it going? So, this was never intended to be its own video. I had this big surprise where I was going to do all three legendary birds in a single video and compare them all. However, as you're going to see, Moltres needed its own video. I just, there was so much to say about this run. There was simply no way to do it justice if I had to talk about two other Pokemon. So for the second edition of How Fast Can You Beat Pokemon Red and Blue with just a, uh, we're going to be talking about Moltres. Now, Moltres has some problems. The biggest problem is its move pool. I mean, Articuno starts with Ice Beam. Zapdos starts with Drill Peck. Moltres starts with Peck and Fire Spin. So Peck is the most basic flying type move. 35 power, and it uses Moltres' attack, which is good, but not as good as its special. Then, we have Fire Spin. Base 15 power, but it works the same way Rap does. For those of you who don't know how Rap works, very cheap. If it hits, the other Pokemon cannot attack until Fire Spin ends. So if you outspeed and just keep hitting with Fire Spin, theoretically, the other Pokemon will never attack. In practice, this never happens. Because unlike Rap, which I consider too luck-based at 85% accuracy, Fire Spin has 70% accuracy. The same as Thunder, a super powerful electric move. So suffice to say, that's awful. And it's all we got. Since you're not intended to have a Moltres this early, it doesn't learn any level up moves until level 51, since you're supposed to catch it at level 50. And so as you probably would expect, Brock is a little difficult, and you can actually get past the Geodude at minimum battles. That's not too big of an issue. You'll see, I do miss Fire Spin. However, because Moltres is a legendary Pokemon, it has plenty of HP and defense to absorb the tackles. Defense Curl does nothing since I am using Fire Spin, and eventually the Geodude will be knocked out. Onyx, however, you're just not gonna win. And so the dream of minimum battles will be over. But it's not as bad as you think because all I needed to do to make Brock a little more consistent was defeat the junior trainer in Brock's gym. Yes, it would have been fast to beat the bug catchers, but I wanted to see if I would do minimum battles first. And as it turned out, it was perfect after defeating the Diglett and the Sandshrew. I did have to go to the Pokemon Center because Fire Spin will miss a lot, but the strategy, quote unquote, is just to use Fire Spin, hope it doesn't miss. Another thing you should know, I've talked about in other videos how critical hits are way more common in Generation 1. Moltres is pretty fast, so expect to see them, let's say, around 20% of the time. But the point is, when a multi-turn attack like Fire Spin gets a critical hit, it's a critical hit every single turn. That's not how it works in modern Pokemon, but it's very useful. Fire Spin can also last between two and five turns. So you're basically hoping for critical hits and a lot of turns. And of course, a minimal amount of misses. Now you're not gonna outspeed the Onix once you knock out the Geodude. Again, Geodude was pretty easy. Onix, you're basically just hoping for good luck. I needed to do this about four or five times. And I don't mind that. You see, the thing with Brock is Generation 1 just doesn't give you enough tools to get by Brock consistently. So if I have to use a little bit of luck in order to save some in-game time, I really would prefer to do that. And hilariously in this attempt, I got such good luck, I lost all of 6 HP defeating Brock. But you might be thinking, oh great, now that Brock's defeated, all our troubles are over. <laughs> okay. No, Fire Spin sucks. I mean, in Generation 1, there is no TM for Flamethrower, so this is a big thing. I don't want to do this comparison between the three legendary birds, even though that was my original intent, but I do want to say that Articuno starts with Ice Beam. Zapdos gets Thunderbolt from Lieutenant Surge, which isn't too late in the game. Moltres never gets Flamethrower. Flamethrower does not become a TM until Generation 3. We will teach it Fire Blast once we defeat Blaine, the seventh gym leader. So, for the foreseeable future, it's Fire Spin, which can miss, or Peck, which is awful. So, 
while none of the battles approaching Misty are difficult per se, because there's so much inherent luck, you can get enough bad luck, especially against something like a Zubat. Heck, I would lose to a Nidoran female just because I missed with Fire Spin so many times and I got poison. It happens. And you just have to save a lot and prepare to reset. And don't worry, I'll keep that into account how much the real time is going up, even though in-game time is what I usually prefer. But all right, we've made it through Mount Moon, and of course we're not going to battle Misty first. That would be a terrible idea. Instead, I'm going to go battle rival number two. And one thing I want to point out, just in case you're curious, we're only about 8 to 10 minutes behind our pace with Mewtwo. That's not too bad considering we had to do some extra battles, and Fire Spin is just such an annoying move. Case in point, this battle is very obnoxious, because if you miss Fire Spin against Pidgeotto, you'll get Sand Attack, and Fire Spin does, well, it just does way more damage. Think about it, it has to hit a minimum of two times if it hits, and my special is way higher. So in most cases, Fire Spin is the better move, plus it can hit more than two times, making it much better than Peck. Now, ideally, because I outspeed Pidgeotto, you would just keep using Fire Spin like I do, and it would hit and then Pidgeotto never attacks. That's not common, but you kind of need that to happen, because if Pidgeotto uses Sand Attack, you can't really use Fire Spin at all anymore, and then you're just done. So I would just reset if I miss and it uses Sand Attack. Anyway, Abra, you can just use Peck. Rattata, you would think to use Fire Spin, but I opt for safety. It should be a 3-hit KO, but I got a critical hit, so it was only a 2-hit KO. That's pretty lucky. Now, with Squirtle, Peck is a 4-hit KO, and Squirtle's water attacks are not too scary. And I beat rival number 2. But don't fool yourself, this took about... I won 2 times in probably 10 attempts. 20% is not a great win ratio, but... That's Fire Spin for ya. Anyway, none of the other battles on Routes 24 and 25 are worth talking about. Even the Hiker, Fire Spin is good enough. But now, time to fight Misty, right? Wrong. Listen, it would be faster in theory, but... In practice, Starmie would just simply annihilate me. It would outspeed, Bubble Beam, just not going to happen. So, I'm going to head to the SSN and teach Moltres Body Slam. <laughs> I fooled you. You thought that was a real thing I was going to do. No, Moltres can't learn Body Slam. Let's actually, if you look at its move pool, it is so shallow. Moltres has fire moves, flying moves, normal moves, and that's it. It does not know damaging moves of any other type. And to be honest, most of the normal moves it learns aren't all that useful either. We are really, really just stuck with Peck and Fire Spin for the long haul. And in case you guys were curious, I am now 13 minutes behind my Mewtwo pace, but at that point I'd actually defeated Misty. So take that with a huge grain of salt. But back to the run, rival number three is actually very, very easy. It only took me one try, but I get pretty lucky with Fire Spin. It's doing a lot more damage, so that's kind of good, meaning I don't need to hit as many. And you see when I can, I use Peck. Kadabra does take two, which is not the best. And War Turtle is a three at KO, but I do get a critical hit. As you can see though, Bubble isn't doing very much damage. But after how annoying Rival 2 was, I will definitely take an easier battle. But now it's time, unless we want to battle some more optional trainers, to go back to Cerulean and battle Misty. Now, Staryu isn't too bad, Peck is a 2 hit KO, and Water Gun doesn't do too much damage. Starmie, on the other hand, destroys me. I mean, it doesn't even use Bubble Beam, it's a 3 hit KO after Staryu, and Peck was about a 4 hit KO. Plus, I was being outsped. Well, let's try again. Quickly knock out Staryu with a couple Pecks. And now I'm gonna try Fire Spin. I even get a critical hit, but... No, it just, this isn't going to work. So, what do I do? Do I backtrack? How am I going to be able to get past Misty with wasting the least amount of time? Well, there is an additional trainer in Misty's gym that I could battle. And I do have some rare candies. So I'm going to battle that optional trainer, use the rare candies, and hopefully that should give me enough speed to outspeed Starmie. So now I'm at level 24. Staryu is still a 2 hit KO. I actually forgot to fully heal. 
But thankfully, when it came to Starmie, I outspeed. I do a lot more damage with Peck. X Defend isn't great, but since I now outspeed, I can string together some fire spins, and so long as I don't get too many misses, we should be good. Unfortunately, though, I misclick. It doesn't cost me, but Starmie was at low enough health that I should have gone for Peck as opposed to Fire Spin. Starmie punishes me for that mistake with a Bubble Beam, but thankfully I don't get a speed drop, and I am able to use Peck and defeat Misty. I mean, thank goodness Moltres outsped Starmie, because otherwise I would have had to gone back, fought some more trainers. It would have wasted a ton of time. While we're definitely way behind Mewtwo's pace, we're still at a pretty respectable pace, still ahead of Pokemon like Ghastly, which makes sense. We're using a legendary Pokemon, and soon enough, we will be getting some better moves and won't have to rely on Peck and Fire Spin. For now, we do, and the only battle I guess I should mention, although nothing interesting happened, is in Rock Tunnel. There is the Hiker with the two Geodude and Graveler. This battle can be a real nightmare because all the Pokemon know self-destruct, which does incredible damage. Thankfully, Fire Spin just doesn't miss. So I don't get hit with self-destruct and it just looks easy. But as we know, statistically that actually was unlikely to happen. Thankfully, these Pokemon are very low special, so Fire Spin is doing a ton of damage. I figured I would be here for a while and was very happy that, that was wrong. So, now... We've made it to Celadon, and ordinarily I'd go to the Rocket Game Corner first, but as some of you might have guessed, I'm going to immediately get the HM for Fly so I can teach it to Moltres, so I have an at least somewhat respectable move to use. And Fly really sucks if you're trying to go fast because it's a two-turn attack. However, it is a lot easier to use than two pecs because you're invulnerable during the in-between, and it does do double the damage, plus it can get a critical hit. Listen, I'm not saying it's not an upgrade, but Flamethrower would have been nice. It, it would have made this run a, a lot more fun. But, alas, didn't happen. And we're going to go to the Rocky Game Corner and battle Giovanni. Now, like other Rock-type Pokemon trainers, Giovanni is someone you think would be a lot more difficult, but ends up being not too bad at all. I do love how this battle starts. Fire Spin miss. Rock Throw miss. Fire Spin miss. Rock Throw miss. Rock Throw, by the way, is 60% accuracy in Generation 1. The battle of the terrible moves Pokemon have to use that never hit. Just fantastic. It's very peak Generation 1. Anyway, I miss one more time, and then I don't miss again against the Onyx. I do miss against the Rhyhorn enough that I only have one Fire Spin left and have to resort to using Fly. Thankfully, because I'm a legendary Pokemon, like I said earlier, good HP, good defense, and my attack is good enough that I'm able to knock out the Rhyhorn on pretty decent health. That being said, if Kangaskhan played its cards right, it could have knocked me out if it got a Comet Punch, critical hit, bite, critical hit. It would have happened. Thankfully, I got a bite, a guard spec, and a rage. Fly was a three hit KO, as you could infer from that. And yeah, overall, not too big a deal. It was a first try victory, and I got terrible, terrible fire spin luck. But thanks to Fly, I was able to win nonetheless. So very, very happy I did that first. Now, typically, the next place I would go is Lavender Town to battle rival number four, but I'm not going to do that, namely because I can't fly. To use Fly outside a battle, we have to beat Lieutenant Surge. So I'm going to go battle Erica because I'm very nervous about battling Lieutenant Surge and would like a little bit more experience. Erica, well... Fly was a one-hit KO against Victory Bell. I don't think that was a range. I think that's just a one-hit KO. Tangela took three hits of Fire Spin. Vileplume was not a one-hit KO. It did tank the Fly on, like, a sliver of HP. However, Petal Dance is double-resisted, and yeah, that was pretty much not in doubt. The only gym leader Moltres has a fantastic matchup against, and unsurprisingly, it went very well. But now, I do need to start using Fly in order to save time, so... We have to battle Lieutenant Surge right now. As it turns out, not so bad. I miss with Fire Spin turn one, Volter abuses Sonic Boom, which is the best move it could have used, speaking from Lieutenant Surge's perspective. On the next turn, I do use Fire Spin, which lasts three turns and knocks out Voltorb. Next comes out Pikachu, Fire Spin hits and it's a two hit KO. Now I just need to not miss against Raichu. Turns out there was something else I should have been worrying about. Fire Spin hits, on turn 2 of Fire Spin, Lieutenant Surge uses the next speed. So after it wears off after turn 3, 
Raichu uses Thunderbolt and gets a critical hit. I'm pretty sure I've lost, but Fire Spin hits. I just need it to last three turns and it lasts two Thundershock and I somehow survive and then win. Okay. Overall, that was pretty terrible luck. I usually don't get Sonic Boom against Voltorb when I battle Lieutenant Surge generally. And Thunderbolt critical hit? I mean, listen, the fact I still won is a pretty good sign. And so we can move on and fly to Lavender Town and battle rival number four. And as per usual, rival number four isn't too difficult. In fact, it's not even worth showing, to be honest. Fire spin against Pidgeotto. I didn't even need to use it. I could have used Fly. Fly one hit KOs every single one of his Pokemon, except for War Turtle, which doesn't really have any good water moves anyway, and I knock it out the very next turn. But now, there is a legitimate question where I should go next. I mean, I'll always go to Fuchsia City and head to the Safari Zone to get Surf right away, but should I fight Koga or should I go through Sylph Company first? I decide Koga makes the most amount of sense, simply because I didn't really think Koga's Pokemon would pose too, too much of a challenge. Well, let's see if I was right. Well, it doesn't start out too good. I miss two consecutive Fire Spins. Coffin goes for X Attack and it misses with Smog. Thankfully, Fire Spin number three hits and is a critical hit. It lasts for three turns, almost knocks it out. I meant to go for Peck. I use Fire Spin again. That was playing with fire, pun somewhat intended, but it's all good. I knock out Coughing number one. Against Muck, I get insane luck. I get Fire Spin hitting on the first turn with a critical hit and it lasts for five turns. As you can see, during Fire Spin, the opponent can use items like X Attacks, and Koga does like to do that. We saw Lieutenant Surge use an X Speed earlier. Once again, I hit A one too many times and go for Fire Spin when I should have gone for Peck, and thankfully, don't get punished for it. I really do need to slow down, but, you know, gotta go fast. Coughing number two, I get another three turn Fire Spin, but this time I miss. It goes for Smokescreen, and thank goodness it misses. Finally, I hit another Fire Spin, but once again, I'm hitting the A button too quickly, not paying full attention to what I'm doing, and I should have gone for Peck. This time, I do get punished with a smoke screen, which is awful, but that's about all that Coughing can do before it gets knocked out. Thankfully, I do have a backup plan against Weezing. It likes to self-destruct, so I'm going to just go for Fly and hope it self-destructs while I'm in the air. Well, I Fly, it uses Toxic. That's not self-destruct, and don't use it here. Okay, X Attack. Let's try Flying again. And hey, hey, what do you know? Weezing self-destructs. And while this could have been a lot easier if I just used Fire Spin, potentially, I don't mind this being a backup plan. It was pretty nice. Only the second battle, and we have defeated Koga. That is five gym battles. However, since they've all taken so much longer, even though we've only had two extra battles, we are at two hours and 27 minutes. Don't forget, Mewtwo was done at 3.03. So, I'm not really thinking it's going to be all that close, but maybe once I get Fire Blast, things will start to speed up quite a bit. And while I technically could go right now, I think Blaine would actually be really difficult. And instead, I'm just going to go to Sylph Company and battle the one, the only, other than the other, like, six times we battle him, Rival Fievel. Some of you have asked, those who are newer, j why do you call him Rival Fievel? Well, for that, we need to go all the way back to my childhood. No, <laughs> kidding. No, in one of the challenges, I was going off script and I was talking about Rival number five and I sometimes think and talk too quick. So instead of saying Rival five, I said Rival Bible. And yeah, I thought that kind of sounded adorable, to be honest. So I kept it in and now it's a thing. And to be honest, I still think it sounds kind of adorable. But unlike Rival number 4, Rival Fievel is actually quite difficult sometimes. Is this going to be one of those times? Well, it looks like it. I miss Fire Spin and get a critical hit with Wing Attack. Perfect. The next few Fire Spins do hit. Finally, Pidgeot does the smart thing and goes for Quick Attack, which attacks first. And then I miss with Fire Spin. The truth is, I should be using B. And that way, I don't accidentally click Fire Spin because... I should have gone for Peck, and I do, and knock out Pidgeot. I'm actually pretty annoyed that it took until after I was finished all the Pokemon that use these type of continuous attacks before I realized pressing B would solve all my issues. Whatever. I level up, and I'm almost at exactly half health for the last four Pokemon. Now, I go for Fly against Growlithe. It's not supposed to be a one-hit KO, but I get a critical hit. Doesn't really matter. Growlithe doesn't have anything that bothers me too much. Execute does, and so I need to go for Fire Spin. It isn't a one-hit KO with Fly anymore. And Stun Spore pretty much ends the battle. Thankfully, I hit first turn, and it lasts three turns, knocking out Execute. But Alakazam is also pretty scary. Now, this was only my second attempt, so I have no idea if the critical hit mattered or not. I think it did, but 
Who cares? On to Blastoise. I hit two consecutive fire spins, which all last pretty decent amounts, but it's doing like next to nothing, even a critical hit. And I forgot, it only has Bubble and Water Gun. Why not just try to go for Fly? Maybe you'll get a critical hit. This is going to be tough though. A lot of defense on Blastoise. Fly does okay damage, but then Blastoise uses Withdraw, and at this point I'm like, okay, well, I've lost. I'm at 19 health after that Water Gun. Let's just go for Fire Spin and pray it doesn't miss. Well, it doesn't. Once again, I even use it one time where I should use Peck, but hey, it's all good. We went fast. But the truth is, I got pretty lucky. Had I lost here, I may have actually gone to Blaine just to see if that would have been any easier. But hey, can't complain with a positive result. And to save some time, I don't really want to talk about the second Giovanni fight. There's really nothing all that interesting or unique about it. So we're going to skip ahead and move on to Sabrina. I will mention that I do get the Polka Doll and Mimic. You guys have been wondering, where is Mimic? Well, most of the Pokemon I've been using lately have deep enough move pools. I don't need to use Mimic, but Moltres has a terrible move pool. So Mimic is more than appreciated. Won't be using it in this battle, but we have it for the future. Now, as I head through the gym, Sabrina, we are not going to be using Fire Spin. It just doesn't make sense. Their special is too high. We're just going to use Fly. And you'd think that would take away a lot of the luck. Let's see if that's true. Well, Kadabra number one isn't too bad. Fly, one hit KO. Mr. Mime shouldn't have been, especially after it used Barrier, but I got a critical hit, so that saves a little bit of time. Mr. Mime honestly isn't that big a deal anyway. Unsurprisingly, Venomoth, which is weak to both Fire and Flying, is a one hit KO with Fly. And now, Alakazam is where the luck comes in. Alakazam goes for Psy Wave, so it does outspeed. I go for Fly. We don't want Reflect, which is what I just got. And you can see that did half damage, so it would have done about two-thirds. And unfortunately, this gets worse because Alakazam can also recover while I'm flying. And that's exactly what it does right here. So this is going to be really annoying. I just need a critical hit. And honestly, I'm starting to get a little frustrated. It's like recovering every other turn. But thankfully, just as I'm starting to get really annoyed, I get that critical hit, knocks out Alakazam. So yeah, luck did play a factor, but... Hey, if you attack enough times, the odds are that I should get at least one critical hit. So I don't think it was exceptional luck. We have beaten Sabrina, and we have two gyms left to go, including the one that will give me a fire-type attack that is not just awful. And I'm just so pumped. We don't need to talk about anything before then. Let's skip right ahead to Blaine and get me Fire Blast. And last time comparison, we're at three hours and five minutes as I save in front of Blaine. That's two minutes slower than my total Mewtwo run. And you can tell this was my first battle with Blaine because I'm not really sure what to do. So I use Fly, it's not a one hit KO. Then I think about using Mimic and mimicking agility. And why? Because of the badge boost glitch, yeah. Usually in case someone is new, I go over what it is, but I'm gonna be honest, didn't really matter. The biggest reason being I'm going to level up in the middle of the fight and the extra boosts you get from the badge boost glitch go away when you level up. So it's not worth going into. Thankfully though, critical hits are always helpful and I get one against Ponyta. So now just two Pokemon left. Rapidash the two a KO and we get to see Blaine's amazing strategy of using a super potion at full health. He does actually use one when it's not at full health, but unfortunately for Blaine, it makes little difference and I knock him out with the next fly anyway. Now we just have our canine left. Fly does okay damage. I was thinking it might be a 3 KO, but it just misses. Unfortunately, at this point, Blaine starts to heal, and this is a big drawback of Fly. They can still use items during your invulnerable turn. So I start going for Peck. I get a critical hit. Eventually, our canine gets tired of doing nothing and goes for takedown. And by that point, it's at such low health, and I believe Blaine had run out of super potions. So I was able to knock out our canine. And finally, I have Fire Blast. I am so excited because this is a game changer. I mean, not literally because it's still Pokemon Blue, but you know what I mean. And who better to try out our new attack than usually the easiest gym leader in the entire game, Giovanni. Even though Giovanni has rock types, now that I have Fire Blast, not going to be too big a problem. Let me show you. So in Generation 1, Fire Blast has a 30% chance of burning the target, which is absolutely insane. And it does not one-hit KO almost any of Giovanni's Pokemon. It does burn three of them. 
Rhyhorn it doesn't, but I just use Fly to finish it off. Dugtrio is the one that it's a one-hit KO. Nido Queen it burns, but Giovanni uses a guard spec anyway, so who cares? I do opt for the riskier second hit with Fire Spin, but it is quicker since I don't have to wait that turn that Fly takes. The burn does matter for Nido King. It goes for Thrash, so that cut its damage in half. I opt to go for Fly just to be safe. And then Rhydon, unfortunately, I miss. It would have been a two-hit KO, I think, but I do burn, and then I opt just to go for Fire Spin. That in the combination with the burn. Knock it out after two uses of Fire Spins, and that is all eight gyms. It took a lot longer, was way more frustrating, but we did it. We have our best attack. Oh, you just know it's going to be smooth sailing from here on in, right? <laughs> well, let's battle rival number six and see how smooth that sailing is going to be. So against Pidgeot, I once again will mimic agility to try and set up the badge boost glitch, but spoiler, I'll level up after execute. So probably would have been best served just to use a single agility for the speed. When I finally used Fire Blast, it was a one hit KO against Pidgeot because of a critical hit. So that's pretty good. It was very, very close to knocking out Rhyhorn, probably just one or two HP. Goes for Tail Whip, which fails. I go for Fire Spin, again, risky, but quicker, and it knocks it out. For Growlithe, I opt to go for Fly. It doesn't knock it out, but it misses with Takedown, which is pretty good. I knock it out with the next Fly. I really don't want to miss versus Execute because Stun Spore or Leech Seed are awful. Thankfully, I don't. And we have just Alakazam and Blastoise remaining. So something really odd happens here. I go for Fly. After I hit, Alakazam uses Side Beam and it misses. I didn't know the opponents also suffer from the 1 in 256 glitch where your attacks just miss even though they're at 100%. I thought it was just the player character. That's actually really interesting. I didn't know that. Anyway, knock it out with Fire Blast. Again, risky, but quicker. And now all I have left is Blastoise, which does now have Hydro Pump. So I'm pretty scared. I go for Fly and it goes for Withdraw. That is the worst case scenario and I do like nothing. Blastoise then goes for Hydro Pump, but thank goodness it misses. Now I considered going for Fire Spin, but I decided to go for Fire Blast and thankfully Blastoise goes for Withdraw since it is classified as a water move. The rival knows water is super effective against fire, but it doesn't know the difference between damaging and status moves. Gen 1 is the best. Unfortunately, eventually he figures it out, uses Hydro Pump and one more hit and I'm knocked out. Thankfully, I've gotten good luck with my Fire Blasts. I go for Fly just because I want the most accurate move I know, and I knock out Blastoise. Very little health remaining. That was kind of lucky because he easily could have gone for two Hydro Pumps, and uh, that's going to be kind of scary when you have to face the champion, but that is a problem for future j -Rose. Current j -Rose is moving on to the Elite Four with a Moltres, Sunshine and Rainbows, I can't think of a single thing, not a single trainer at the Elite Four that Moltres is going to struggle with. Especially not the first one, who basically, even though is considered the Ice type, is essentially a second Water type trainer. Also, in case you forget, in Generation 1, Fire does not resist Ice. So Ice is super effective against Moltres because it is still a Flying type. Yeah. This may be a little bit of a problem. And you're probably thinking this is when j -Rose starts to level up a whole bunch. Well, not exactly. And before I begin, I should mention this because I'm going to get a lot of comments. In Generation 1, when you have dual type Pokemon like Dugong, where one of their types water resists fire and their other type ice is weak to fire, there will always be a message displayed. In this case, it's not very effective. Ignore the message. That's not true. It's just doing regular damage. The message itself is just a bug. But with that said, cue up the ice theme and it's time to battle Laura Lee. I go for Fire Blast, I get the burn and it does roughly half health. Dugong goes for Roar Beam, it takes away half of my health. Thankfully I don't miss with Fire Blast and I knock out Dugong. Fire Blast does a ton of damage to Cloyster, almost knocking it out in one hit. But Cloyster decides to go for Clamp, which is a water move and I should be done. Clamp is like water wrap but it only lasts for two turns. In between, Laura Lee used a Super Potion, which isn't a big deal, and I'm able to hit with Fire Blast and knock it out. I have very, very little HP, but I still think I'm probably gonna win. Why? Because Slowbro has really bad AI. First things first, let me say that I'm going to mimic Amnesia and try and raise my special. 
but Slowbro with two water moves. Withdraw, which does nothing, and Water Gun. In yellow, it has Surf, and this would be just over, but here that's not the case. Thankfully, it used Withdraw turn one, and thus I can set up Amnesia. Now, even if he uses Water Gun, I will be fine, and I'm gonna try and set up three Amnesia. Finally, on the third turn of setup, Slowbro decides to use Water Gun. It only does around seven HP, and I should be able to sweep through the entire team with a max powered fire blast. Missing would be very bad since I have exactly seven power points, which is what I need. Thankfully, I don't miss against Slowbro, Jinx, or Lapras. So that was pretty good. Obviously not missing with seven consecutive fire blasts is actually pretty unlikely. Only around 33% and I was at such low health that I wouldn't have been able to withstand any attack even with max special, and to be honest, that usually isn't the case. Cloister usually heals and I'm at a lot more HP, but whatever, it worked nonetheless. Now, Bruno, you think would be very tough. I mean, Onyx is leading off. It knows Rock Throw, quadruple super effective. Yeah, you'd be wrong. Onyx has such bad special that Fire Blast will knock it out in one hit, even though it actually is not very effective. It also will knock out Hitmonchan, Hitmonlee, and Onyx number two. Ordinarily, Machamp is a two hit KO, which isn't a big deal anyway, because its best move is Submission. However, I get a critical hit, so that was five one hit KOs. That is now 12 consecutive Fire Blasts that have hit, which is just over a 14% chance of happening. So I think I'm getting a little bit of karma after that abysmal Dratini run, but if I ever needed some good luck, it's against Agatha. Agatha is one of the few trainers which is more difficult in red and blue versus yellow version. And that's because the initial Gengar knows Hypnosis, Confuse Ray, just a terrible combination, and I'm gonna be outsped. So, how is this battle gonna look? Well, I opt to go for Fly because Gengar has good special and bad defense. Agatha uses Hypnosis and I fall asleep, but I wake up on the first turn. That's pretty good. Then, because Agatha just attacks randomly, she uses Dream Eater, which doesn't affect me, I go for Fly. Obviously, her next attack misses. I hit with Fly, does roughly half damage, but it's gonna be a range. Now, I was very curious how much Fire Blast would do, so I go for it, and Agatha swaps into Golbat, which couldn't have been more perfect. Waste a turn, and Golbat is almost knocked out. I really don't want to miss with Fire Blast, but I decide to go for it anyway, finally miss, after 13 straight hits, and thankfully it also misses with Supersonic. I then miss again, and this time Golbat hits with Supersonic, so there is my good luck evaporating. Speaking of which, I hit myself at Confusion. Thankfully, Golbat goes for Confuse Ray, which does nothing because I'm already confused. Finally, on my fourth attempt, I actually hit Golbat with Fire Blast, and that is one Pokemon down. Since I'm confused though, I don't want to go for Fly because that's two chances for me to hit myself in Confusion, I go for Fire Blast. Thankfully, Gengar went for Confuse Ray, didn't work, but then I snap out of Confusion, use Fire Blast, but it just missed knocking it out. Not great, but since I'm not confused, I can try and go for Fly. I figured Agatha would probably use a Super Potion. Why they don't have Hyper Potions at this point, I have no idea. Thankfully, while Fly does have a small chance to miss, it doesn't. That is two Pokemon down. Haunter comes out, I actually do outspeed and go for Fly. Obviously its attack misses, I hit with Fly and it hits me with Confuse Ray. Great. Now honestly, I probably just should have gone for Fire Blast, but I was worried it wouldn't knock it out or miss. Went for Fly and hit myself in Confusion. And Haunter uses that opportunity to hit with Hypnosis and yeah, I think this battle's over. I don't wake up turn one, but Haunter goes for Confuse Ray, which won't do anything, that's kind of nice. The next turn I wake up and it went for Dream Eater. Okay, all right, this might work out, but I'm still confused. I opt to try fly again and I hit myself in confusion, of course. But thankfully, random AI goes for Confuse Ray again. All right, please just snap out of confusion. Well, I don't this turn, but I fly in the air. Thankfully, on the turn I attack, I do snap out of confusion. I knock out the Haunter, only two Pokemon left, and I'm at pretty good HP. I really want Fire Blast to knock out Arbok because it knows Glare and so close, but Arbok switches out. So pretty much the best case scenario. Now, I know this is going to be a 3 hit anyway, so I go for Fire Blast. Gengar starts off with Confuse Ray, the worst possible move, and I hit myself in Confusion. It then goes for Nightshade, and I decide to go for the Hail Mary Fire Spin. 
Now, I didn't know if it checks for confusion every turn. It does, but I snap out and hit three times. I'm hoping for Dream Eater, so I go for another Hail Mary fire spin and goes for Confuse Ray, and I eventually hit myself in confusion. I do eventually get the Dream Eater, but I knock myself out due to confusion, and this is as far as I could make it without further leveling up. Which isn't so bad, I mean we're only two above minimum battles, and considering all the cards we had dealt against us, that's great, but the truth is we're not all that close to beating the game, we still haven't beaten Agatha, or Lance, or the champion, but I do have six rare candies, so let's try and battle Loralee and Bruno again, but this time I'll use my rare candies after Bruno, and see if that makes a difference versus Agatha. Now in this Loralee fight, I get incredibly lucky. I get a critical hit with Fire Blast, which doesn't knock out the Dugong, but does cause Loralee to use a Super Potion. I don't miss with Fire Blast and knock out the Dugong at full HP. Not a guaranteed victory, but looking exceptionally good. And get ready for it to look even better. Cloyster, after I hit with Fire Blast, decides to go for Super Potion. That is now the fourth Fire Blast that hits in a row. And I'm at full health going to Slowbro. Yeah, I think we can say I'm gonna win this battle, unless I get some insanely bad luck, like a miss from Fire Blast, and a critical hit from Ice Punch or Blizzard from Jinx or Lapras. Also, you may have noticed Slowbro used Water Gun, it did about 35 HP, so had it used it turn 1 in the previous battle, I would have lost, obviously. I actually do make a mistake, though, because I'm thinking ahead to what I want to do against Agatha, so I only use two Amnesias, Thus, Fire Blast is not a one-hit KO against Slowbro, which is a huge deal because that means I'm not going to have enough power points for Lapras. I use Fire Blast on Jinx. Truth be told, I should have done this completely reversed. Fire Spin on Jinx, Fire Blast on Lapras. Have no idea why I did it this way, but Jinx gets knocked out. I go for Fire Spin on Lapras. It hits three times, but then I miss with the next Fire Spin. It goes for Blizzard, and you can see how much damage that did. However, that would be the last Fire Spin to miss. And that was pretty unlikely considering how many super potions Loralee decided to use, but hey, that was my bad, and I still won. Always appreciate when the backup strategy works, but totally an unforced error. But now that we have to face Bruno again, it's time for Jero's 11's Count Von Count impression. And today, we want to know how many fire blasts it will take to knock out all of Bruno's Pokemon. Will it take one, two, three, oh. It missed. But now three, four, five with the critical hits, five fire blasts. Uh, uh, uh. Seriously, I really don't think that's a good impression, but people seem to like it, so whatever. It's not like I have anything better to say during the Bruno battles. And yeah. But now a part of the video that I hate, but you guys also seem to love the Agatha Lottery. Will we get Jero's luck or Dratini luck? Let's find out. So as you saw, I'm at level 51 now. The big question, will I outspeed the first Gengar? Yes, and that's huge because it went for Confuse Ray, which would have hit, and now I'm in the air. Unfortunately, it can hit after I land since it's still not a one-hit KO. It goes for Hypnosis and I fall asleep, but I wake up turn one and it goes for Dream Eater. That's pretty fun. And now, like Falco, I prefer the air. Fly hits again, and that's one Pokemon down. Will Golbat be a one-hit KO with Fire Blast, I wonder? Uh, oh, oh, well, no, and it just hit me with the Confuse Ray. <laughs> Great, and I just hit myself in Confusion, but thankfully Agatha healed, which is obviously not a big deal. I hit myself again in Confusion, Haze would be nice. Okay, Confuse Ray's not the biggest deal. Still don't snap out of Confusion, but at least I don't hit myself, and Fire Blast knocks out Golbat. I decide to go for Fly because I'm worried about Hypnosis, and those concerns were justified, and while I'm still confused when I go into the air, when I attack, I snap out perfect, and I get a critical hit. Think that really did matter, and that's three Pokemon down. Now, I really want Arbok to be a one-hit KO. I know it's going to be close. Well, I miss, but it goes for Screech, which doesn't matter because after Arbok faints, there are no more physical attacks, plus this boosts my special by 12.5%, which is good. And that may have made the difference in making Fire Blast a one-hit KO. Once again, I go for Fly. I hope it's going to be a two-hit KO. It looks like it's going to be. Gengar goes for Toxic, which misses. It does have a 10% chance to miss. Wouldn't have mattered anyway. Fly hits, and I have defeated Agatha. Okay, so that was the battle I was most concerned about. I mean, it's not like... 
Lance really has any Pokemon I should be thinking about. Oh, yeah. So, Fly did, like, a third, and Hydro Pump did, I don't know, over half? If I got a critical hit, that would have been nice, but I don't get knocked out with Hydro Pump, which also could have missed. So, I see a path to victory here, but that's pretty awful. Basically, I'm asking myself to go through the Agatha Lottery, and then rely on either a 15% miss, or a roughly, I don't know, like 16% chance of a critical hit? Yeah, that's not usually the way I like to do things. So I was at level 52 here. How much leveling up will I need to do in order to make this fight, well, I don't know, even semi-consistent? Well, here's what it looks like at level 59, so seven levels higher. So I go for fly, it hits and does just over a third. That's still not half. I do get the Hydro Pump miss, which should mean that I will at least get past Gyarados. I go for Fly again, and when it hits, it's a critical hit. So I didn't just make it past Gyarados, I made it past at full health. Holy moly! I think we're going to make it to the rival I should have shown the previous battles. But it's not like Lance's other Pokemon are great for a Fire Flying type, so I'm going to use Agility both for Aerodactyl Speed and to boost my other stats a little bit due to the badge boost glitch. Dragonair goes for Hyper Beam, which does next to nothing, and it has to recharge. That gives me a free turn to use Agility. On the second turn, it uses Dragon Rage, which does exactly 40 damage. I've already set up two. I was hoping that would be enough, so rather than get hit with another attack, I opt to go for Fly. Fly connects, but it doesn't knock it out, and then Lance uses a Hyper Potion. So, okay, let's see after another agility, another 12.5% boost to my attack. Maybe that will be enough? Well, we'll have to find out later because I miss with Fly. And now, after Dragon Rage, holy moly, that great Gyarados luck, all evaporated. I connect with Fly, and due to probably a poor range, it did just about as much damage as the last one, which is not enough. I can knock out Dragonair with Fire Blast, but there's no way I'm going to make it through the rest of Lance's Pokemon. And as it turns out, because I was curious, I go for Fire Blast, it's doing more damage than Fly. I guess that's just how good my special is. Good to know. Thankfully, and I rarely say this, Dragonair went for Hyper Beam as opposed to Dragon Rage. It doesn't knock me out, plus it needs to recharge, so I knock it out on the next turn, and now I have to deal with Aerodactyl. While I could have experimented and saw how much damage Fire Blast would do, I decided to go for the Hail Mary Fire Spin, because I will outspeed, and I miss. Thankfully, Aerodactyl goes for Supersonic and it misses. I get another turn and I miss again. Hyper Beam, I'm done. Okay, I mean, I should have probably seen how much Fire Blast would do and it probably would have knocked it out, but... But the truth is, this battle is not going to be consistent until I can knock out Dragonair in a single Fire Blast. And that means I'm going to have to level up just a little bit more. And all this level up time is costing tons of time. To put it in perspective... We are at 5 hours and 5 minutes of in-game time, and I've been trying to go as fast as I possibly can. Ghastly already finished the run half an hour ago. Just unbelievable. But, we still haven't even gone through the game yet. Let's try and battle Loralee once again. I'm 12 levels higher now, so you'd think the battle would look really different, but it just is a bit more consistent. Case in point, Dugong is still a 2-hit KO. Cloyster is now a 1-hit KO, that is a difference. But I still use Mimic against Slowbro, it's just safe to do that. And you can knock out It, Jinx, and Lapras, all with Fire Blast. And now I have some to spare, so way more consistent, as you would expect, 12 levels higher. And, of course, I've already done my count impression, so let's just quickly show the Bruno battle once again. Since everything was a one hit KO last time, you wouldn't expect things to be different, but recall Machamp was a critical hit. Now, it's... Almost a one hit KO, not a critical hit. I burnt it, it used Leer, so that still counts as five Fire Blasts, five knockouts. Yeah, pretty much as could be expected. Agatha is also going to be a lot more consistent as you would expect, but luck still plays a factor. So I go for Fly, she swaps into Golbat. Not the end of the world, I miss. And get hit with Confuse Ray, and then hit myself in Confusion. Thankfully, it uses Supersonic, which does nothing. And perfect timing, I snap out of Confusion, and it's a 1-hit KO with Fire Blast. I go for Fly, miss a Hypnosis, Fly hits, and Agatha switches into Haunter. Literally could not have handpicked a better move. 
because Haunter, I'm hoping, is going to be a one-hit KO. Hopefully, I don't miss with Fly. I don't, and it was a one-hit KO. Gengar will be knocked out by either a Fire Blast or a Fly, so as long as I don't miss, we have two more Pokemon left, one I'm not even worried about at practically full HP. Optical for Fire Blast, gotta save the time, it hits. Now Arbok comes out, I really don't want to miss because Glare would be very problematic, although not the end of the world. Don't need to worry, however, I hit it with Fire Blast. Now we have the second Gengar, I go for Fly, I hit, does around half. It does confuse me as I land, and I opt to go for Fly, let's just risk it. I don't snap out of confusion, but I don't hit myself in confusion, and I don't miss. And the Agatha Lottery is turned into, well, the Agatha Minor Inconvenience. But Agatha wasn't our problem anymore. It was Lance. That Gyarados and his Dragon Pokemon. I'm not completely sure what I'm even going to do because I'm going to use seven rare candies. And honestly, because this is my first time at this level, I'm not even sure of what strategy. But that said, I'm all leveled up. Let's try Lance again. I'm pretty convinced Fly is still the play, so I go for Fly. Thankfully it hits, does around half, as does Hydro Pump. I mean just under half, so it'll be a 3 hit KO. But I don't want to be hit with another one because then a single Dragon Rage would knock me out. Thankfully Fly turned out to be a 2 hit KO, that's awesome. But I'm not sure if that means I'm going to win or not. It all depends on how much damage I do once I've used all 3 agilities. Well as I set up, I get hit with Slam. I get hit with Hyper Beam, and thankfully that requires a recharge turn. And then Dragonair uses Agility. Alright, I have plenty of health, I can even afford to miss. Let's see if Fly will knock it out because I prefer the slightly better accuracy. I go for Fly, it knocks it out. Was that just a range? Let's try again. Go for Fly, knock out Dragonair number 2. Okay, but Aerodactyl I'm gonna want to use Fire Blast because it has better defense than Special. Please don't miss, thank goodness, and it is a one-hit KO, alright. But is it gonna one-hit KO Dragonite? The answer is no, but I do get a burn, so that's another reason to use Fire Blast. It goes for Slam, does just 15 HP, I don't miss with Fire Blast, and we have defeated Lance. With a level 65 Moltres, you think I wouldn't be so excited, but I am. This has been a really, really frustrating run so far. But I have a pretty good idea what I'm going to do against the champion. I'm pretty sure I am out of the woods, and all I need is to not get some atrocious luck, and we'll be good. Maybe I'll even have time to tack on Articuno at the end if this video isn't too long already. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Final battle. Here we go. All right, turn one, I go for Fire Blast, it hits. I love the Fire Blast animation. It's just so darn cool, and even cooler, it knocks out Pidgeot in a single hit, which I needed. Now, I'm worried about Blastoise because it's great defense, so I'm actually going to mimic Psychic. I mean, 30% chance to lower special, maybe it'll even one-hit KO. I don't see the downside unless I get hit with Psychic. Please don't lower my special. Okay, now I'm going to go for Fly. Just don't use Reflect. It does not, and I get a critical hit anyway, so it wouldn't have mattered. All right, I think we're good. I think that's it. Rhyhorn isn't a big threat. I was wondering if Fire Blast would one-hit KO, and I love the animation. It does not. Rhyhorn uses Tail Whip. All right, that just increases my stats a little bit more. Come on, this has to be it. I use Psychic, knock out Rhydon. Arcanine has amazing stats. I go for Psychic to try and get the special drop, which I get. It uses Roar, so it didn't matter. And because I like the animation so much, even though this was really unnecessary, I go for Fire Blast to knock it out. But now I really need to hit Executor. I don't want to be hit with Hypnosis and fall asleep. And of course, both those things happen. All right. Turn one, I'm still asleep, but it misses with Barrage. Turn two, I wake up. Please don't use Hypnosis. All right, it uses Stomp. That's fine. And now please hit. There we go. All right, I don't know how much damage Psych will do, but I'm pretty sure this is good enough. I go for Psychic, and he uses the full restore. All right, not the best, but... Whatever, let's try that again. All right, crit, special drop. This battle is over. For me. Are you kidding me? Are you serious? No. Are you kidding? <laughs> I get the crit, the special drop. I got literally everything and it got a crit. It got a crit. Are you kidding me? Come on, come on, come on. No, that's all right. That's not okay. That's not cool. In real time, this is already one of the longest runs I've done, and that's only because I've really tried to make Moltres look as good as it possibly can, while still not resorting to lucky strategies. And like, 
really this just is not what I needed. But if you want to see what else I didn't need, let's look at this Laura Lee battle. Now the battle starts out pretty much the exact same as you'd expect. Two hit KO on Dugong, one hit KO on Cloyster. Accidentally misclicked and used Fire Blast, that actually turned out to be important. Amnesias. Miss with Fire Blast again, that's not good at all, but don't worry because it shouldn't be that big a deal. Fire Spin is practically a 1-hit KO on Jinx, I mean it does a minimum of 2, knocked it out in 2 hits. Alright, now I just have to hit against Lapras. Okay, maybe Fire Spin? Okay, maybe Fire Spin? Okay, maybe Fire Spin? Okay, maybe... Alright, you get the point. And it didn't even last 3 turns, it only lasted 2, meaning I could have missed again and lost to Laurelie. Just... <sighs> I'm actually kind of glad I don't have to do these lives sometimes because these are really frustrating when you just get bad luck like this. I know I still won, and yeah, there's nothing to say about Bruno, so I'm just going to talk through. But the frustrating thing, I guess, is I try and plan. I plan before run, and I just get annoyed when all my planning gets undone by something that is just so unlikely, like a critical hit Hydro Pump from Blastoise on that one turn. And I guess I'm also frustrated because I really expected Moltres to be a lot better than it was. I mean, I don't have any sort of personal connection to the Pokemon, but it makes me feel like I've done something wrong. Like, I'm not showcasing Moltres to the best of its abilities, and I've done that before. I think I could have done the Squirtle run a lot better, and that's fine. I never promise these runs are perfect. In fact, I explicitly say the opposite. And by the way, this Agatha battle, not too interesting either. I'm just going to talk until we get to Lance. And the funny thing is, I didn't used to show losing battles because the losing battles weren't all that interesting. I would just learn from a mistake or I'd get something kind of fluky in an early battle. Like, I don't show my losses to Laurelie very often, but I've been losing right towards the end in spectacular ways. And maybe, you know what? Honestly, based on the luck I've been getting in some of my previous runs, if you've watched the series, I mean, I get this is the gambler's fallacy, but, you know, kind of evens everything out. Anyway, we're back at Lance. Lance is pretty much identical to the last time. It's the same strategy where I use Fly to a KO on Gyarados. Then I set up three agilities on Dragonair 1. Thankfully in Red and Blue, they don't use Thunder Wave because then I wouldn't be able to do this. But I set up three agilities, Fly against Dragonair 1, Fly against Dragonair 2, Fire Blast against Aerodactyl, Fire Blast, hope for not a critical hit Hyper Beam. Maybe that's going to happen, but no. Knockout Dragonite. All right. So... I have talked for long enough. We have sat through another whole attempt because I like to show the complete attempt in order to tell a full story. But let's hope this story finally comes to an end. Three versus five. Let's do it. Starts out the same way. Awesome Fire Blast animation. Bye bye Pidgeot. Here's where I make a change. I really got lucky I didn't get a special drop or reflect, so I'm just going to go for Fly, it goes for Psybeam, that's good, and I knock out Alakazam. Also could confuse me with Psybeam, which would be pretty bad. I know Fire Blast is a 2 KO against Rhydon from last time. I get hit with a Leer, so same thing with the badge boost glitch. Fire Blast doesn't miss, and down goes Rhydon. I pause for a second to think, I'm going to use Fly against Arcanine, it goes for Leer, I go for Fly, then it goes for Leer again. And that's two badge boost glitches, and that's why I allow it in these runs. I can't control things like this. Of course, Fly is going to knock out our canine, and no miss hypnosis, please? Well, I'm going to take away the possibility of a miss. I'm going to mimic hypnosis. Maybe I'll use that against Blastoise. It goes for Stomp. Then I miss with Fire Blast, but it misses with hypnosis. And then I hit with Fire Blast. But after thinking about it, I'm like, what if I miss with hypnosis? Just go for Fire Blast. You have no idea what will happen get the critical hit in a bird. Blastoise, like Slowbro, has a 1 in 2 chance of going for withdraw, it does, and I hit with Fire Blast, and yeah, that looked pretty easy. So yeah! I mean, when I literally jump out of my chair and start running around my little space I have here, you know I have to make a video. There's, there's no choice. If I get that excited about winning, it means the run was kind of ridiculous. And I think you guys, if nothing else, will agree with me, this run was pretty ridiculous. But... Hey, that's the fun of watching. For those of you who are curious, I do have a couple non-Generation 1 videos coming out. Unfortunately, since I can't speed up later generations, they do take a lot longer. Especially because I'm not just using any Pokemon, but some of the most difficult challenges I've ever attempted. They're taking me very, very long, so that's why there have been a lot longer delays between videos. But the channel's been doing amazing. 
I have nothing left to say other than thank you so much, you guys. Take care, everyone. Bye.